Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a full step-by-step -step guide together today, just showing you how to replace a fuel injector on this 2014 Volkswagen Caddy, and it's the 1.6 TDI. Um, just before we get into the video, I'll just show you the fault that we've got and what it's doing. Basically, it's misfiring, it's off one cylinder. We've got the engine warning light on the dash there, and the glow plug light's been flashing as well. We'll just turn it off, put the ignition back on, and just show you what faults we've got on the diagnostic machine. So we're using this top down scanner again, the Phoenix Light 2. Uh, we've got it plugged in and the fault code that we've got is relating to cylinder 2, injector circuit P0202. Now the injectors on these are listed in sort of normal order. Basically cylinder 1 started at the cam belt end, uh, running across the cylinder 4 at the gearbox end. So just get under the bonnet now, just show you where the injector is located and how to replace it. And if you want to check out the links in the description below, I'll put a link to a new injector and where you can get them from and all the tools and any torque settings as well. Right, so just coming under the bonnet, number one starting at this end, across to number four there. You can already see this one, so I'd had two injectors replaced already. A really common issue on these caddies, well, all on this 1.6 TDI and all the Volkswagen range. Uh, that's why I thought I'd put the video together. Um, but basically, we're looking to replace number two injector. Now, the only issue with doing this, you can't just take the single injector out. The clamp holds both injectors, so we're going to need to take the pipes off for number one and number two to get it out. Well, it's quite a straightforward job to do, not too bad at all really. It's got a standard Volkswagen style connector on there, so you can just put your screwdriver in, flick that piece down and you can pull the connector off. We're just going to undo the 17mm there for the high pressure hose, hand on the rail there. I'm going to take off the 17mm, uh, the, the hose on the, the high pressure pipe, sorry, on the injector one as well. Then we're going to need to just pull out this little clip there, just get a pair of pliers in there, reach, pull that back pop the return hose out the return hose on number one we can leave in um, but we'll get all that stripped down then run you onto the uh, specific tool that you're going to need to get the clamp out there and then we'll crack that off and get the actual injector out So now all that's stripped down, the next thing we're going to do is use one of these special sort of Volkswagen sockets, I think they call them a triple square, size 8, uh, just to undo the main clamp there. Now it is really important when you're refitting these, you do need to torque that bolt correctly because they're stretch bolts and you should always replace the bolt every time. We'll run you through that when we're refitting it. Now that the bolt's out, the injectors can be quite tight, they can get quite seized in the head. I'm hoping this one's not going to be too bad. It should have been out at some point with this one, so I can see this one's moving a little bit. It's not going to have too much trouble getting there out, but this is quite tight, so just going to have to get a bar in there and just work it quite lightly. You've got to be really careful not to damage the rocker cover and not to damage the threads on the union there as well. But we're going to have to work it a little bit just to get it moving and try and get that out. 
and you also don't really want to be using a spanner on the sort of threaded the nut section there otherwise if you're not careful they end up cracking that off so you don't really want to do that So I managed to get that injector out now. It has took quite a lot of work, a bit awkward than most. I've had, I've had a few a little bit trickier to get out, but most of them come out a bit easier than that. Um, but the best way I found doing it, I couldn't quite film it all. Obviously it took a while, but I tried to get most of it on there. But the, the way that I actually got it in the end is with the air chisel, um, just working it back and forth permanently. And then was trying to pry it a little bit, but it didn't really work too well. Um, what's actually happened in the end, while I've been chiseling with the air chisel, it's actually broke the back of the clamp off there. So I need a new clamp. But that allowed me, it's just with the clamp on there, you're a little bit restricted with your movement. Um, with the clamp broke, it was getting it a bit more with the chisel. And once I'd got it working a bit more, I could then get the extension with the 30 mil on it and just work it quite a bit. Obviously, I've had to um, remove some of this other stuff. and You've just got to be really careful. You can't really pry against the rock or cover because it's real brittle. So, uh, but you can see now, without managing to get it worked out. So, you can see all that build up, all that carbon build up on the injected air and rust. So, um, but now that that's out, obviously the bore roll, just that's going to need a good clean up down there. Um, we're going to get some, just going to get a clamp ordered, and I'll come back to the video. Obviously, we're going to be replacing the clamp. So, um, but I'll run you through it now. Once we've got the new bit ordered, I'll run you through just cleaning the bore out, and then we'll refit it, run you through all the torque settings and everything like that. So, we'll just skip it for a few days. We'll get a new clamp ordered.
Right, so we're back on the job a few days later now. Obviously, it took quite a bit of work to get this injector out. It was a bit pretty awkward. So the best method that I found getting it out was using that air chisel on it, so and just knocking it back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but obviously, it did break that injector clamp off. One thing I didn't say the other day when I was just pulling it out is you do need to be quite careful. Obviously, well, if you've done anything like that or you've got any bits of remnants around there, as you pull the injector out, you do need to be careful not to drop anything into the head because it's not just the injector hole. You can see actually in the rocker cover top there, it hasn't got like a tube around there. So you'll be careful you don't drop anything and it go inside there. Obviously, if you drop any bits of metal in there, it could easily cause some damage to the engine. So. Uh, but with these injectors now, I mean at the minute we can only get them direct from Volkswagen genuine ones um, So it hasn't really mattered, there's no surcharge on them So it hasn't really mattered that we've, we've had to damage the injector We don't need to worry about sending it back to get the surcharge on it So, um, But we'll just show you the new injector that we've got uh, If you check out the links in the, description, in the description below I'll put links to a new injector where you can get them from Obviously it comes with a couple of cap protective caps on it there It does come with a new, we did actually get a new O-ring to come with it we need to make sure you fit that, but this one actually, it does come with one new on the injector. It also comes with a new copper seal on it as well. And we've got the new clamp, which obviously on the other one, we just broke that little peg off it. So, got that now. And you should always replace the bolt as well, because the stretch bolts. So, when we come to refitting that, run you through the torque settings there as well. Now, one thing you need to just make note of, obviously we pulled the injector out. We can see that the seal hasn't actually come out with it. Sometimes the seals come out, but it has actually stayed in the head. So I'm just going to show you that now and just show you the a tool that we've got to get that out. Right, so looking down the bore there, it's quite tricky to get it all on the camera. It doesn't sort of light it up quite so well in the bottom there. But just in the bottom of the bore, you can see how badly carboned up it is. And that's obviously why the injector's seized in really tight. So you can just see the copper seal in the bottom there. We're going to need to get that seal out now. And then we'll give it all a clean up with the tool that we've got. Uh, so the tool that we've got, we've got this kit here. Now this is a really handy little kit for cleaning them out. Again, I'll put links in the description below to this kit if you want to get it. But basically this is a little slide hammer for the seals. And all you do is thread that into it. And it's just got a little sort of slide hammer bit on there. So we'll just use that in a minute to get it out. And it comes with a couple of different sort of setups in it, just depending on the bore size for cleaning out the injector seat. So just need to put that in. You can just turn it around to clean the seat up. And it's got a reamer for the actual centre roller as well. And some little wire brushes in it. But if you haven't got this kit, the best method I find for getting uh, the seals out is you want really long, sort of this, obviously this sort of length, uh, screwdriver, but you want the Phillips head one. And if you knock the Phillips head into the seal, you'll normally find that that will grab the copper seal as well and you can pull it out with that. So I'll just show you, I'll just use this, try and get it out with this and then obviously go on to just cleaning the seat out as well. Now I was trying to use a couple of other methods getting it out. Obviously with this type you can't put like a threaded slide hammer attachment on the injector. Um, but I've got like a hook under piece um, which just threads onto this slide hammer for the for injectors and it comes with a load of different uh, fittings now this kit would work quite well it just hooks underneath with all the different adapters there uh, it would have it would have worked quite well if we could get the room directly above it but because the engine's leaning back the scuttle's quite badly in the way uh, if it had come to the stage where we really couldn't get it moving the next thing i would have done is probably just strip the scuttle panel off and that might just give us the access that we needed above it just to get the slide hammer on it's just if you can get that pull in the right direction you'll find it will help get the injector out a lot easier and um, we'll just get that seal out for now and then move on to the next step just see that's gripped it really well a couple of taps has just come straight out i think it nearly broke it off just twisting it into it actually it sort of come out quite easily um but i did again with that scuttle it was a little bit tight just to push it up and over it to get it in but obviously this is quite a long shaft on there so so actually a phillips screwdriver might work quite well on that one really
Right, so we've got that cleaned out quite well now. I might just give it one more go before we refit the injector. Uh, but just another little thing to be aware of is this is an oil seal in the rocker cover. You do need to be quite careful, make sure you're not too rough and damage that. Obviously you can get the new seals. There's normally a choice of two different types, um, but you can just pop that out and pop a new one in if need be. You can just see at the minute, it's cleaned that it out quite well. It just looks a little bit rough on the bottom still. Though. It's not, not bad that, it's got the bulk of it out. So I'll just give it one more go with the rear and then just blow it out with the air gun before we refit the injector. We'll just give that one more quick clean, put the injector into place. Obviously we've got to just lift this one up and drop it in at the same time with it, with the forks, so I'm putting in both in, then we'll just run you through the torque setting for torquing it up correctly as well. Obviously just check as well, because well, when we was prying and messing about, as we have just, we was just prying lightly there once, now it's suddenly it's just slacking that off as well. So you just want to just check that if you've been there that at all. So we're just going to need to give that a nip up before we, uh, put the pipe back on there as well. One thing just to take note of when you're refitting your new injector is just you need to make sure that your copper seal stays on the injector. And they're not too bad on these Volkswagen style ones, they do tend to be quite tight so they do stick on there. Some injector seals are quite loose and if it's really bad you'll probably want to drop it in separately and just make sure it's seated in the bottom um, before you drop the injector in. So. We'll just refit that now. Right, so now that we've seated the two injectors back down with a clamp on there, next thing we're going to do is just fit the new bolt into place. Now it's a three stage torque setting for it. Basically the first stage, stage one, is two newton meters, then eight newton meters, and then 270 degrees. Now we're using a digital torque wrench tonight. This torque wrench only goes as low as seven newton meters. So all I'm going to do is for stage one, I'm just literally just going to wind it in, just finger tight, not quite even that, just till it butts up really. Then I'm just going to go straight in at the eight newton meters. And then once we've set it at eight newton meters, we'll then turn it over to the, because it's a digit one, we can set it onto degrees and we'll do the 270 degrees. Obviously you don't have to use a digit one, um, just using the normal one, you'll have to just put a dial uh, degree gauge on it, that's all. Awesome. So yeah, for the two newton meters, literally just run it down till it's just bottomed out. That's all. Right, so that's set to 8 newton meters now. Now what we'll do is just swap the torque wrench over to degrees and set it up to 270. Right, so we're all talked up correctly now. At this stage, I'm just going to rebuild everything now, exactly as we took it apart. Uh, obviously, just nip that little union up on there for the high pressure pipe. Now, when we're refitting these high pressure pipes, they do want a reasonable nip on them, but you don't have to be, don't want to be silly tight. You are, it is really recommended to replace high pressure hoses every time you take them off, um, but obviously it's quite an expense, and you can quite easily get away with reusing them. So, I'm going to be reusing them today.
It's also worth noting when you're fitting high pressure hoses, you always want to start the threads by hand. I mean, you should with most bolts anyway, but it's quite crucial. Don't if it's a little bit tight, don't try and just get it with a spanner because it's quite easy to cross thread them. Right, so everything's refitted now, exactly as we took it apart. The next thing we're going to need to do is just get back in the cab. I'm just going to hook it up to the diagnostic machine again. I'm just going to run through the coding on the injectors. Now, they are coded injectors. Um, the the two that have been replaced have actually got a number stamped on the side of them. But on this new one that we've replaced, the coding number that we're going to need is this number in the middle there, 94HDFF. So we're just going to make a note of that. Obviously, this style engine counts the injectors running this way, so this is cylinder two. So we're just going to need to change the coding on that on that injector. That's all. Uh, but we'll just hook it up to the top down machine. Just make sure it'll do it, and we'll run you through that now. So we've just done a full system scan there. You don't have to do the full scan every time. You can just do the individual ones. Obviously, it can be a lot quicker. It's just sometimes if I've had a few bits off, I do like to just do a scan and just clear all the codes. That's all each time. So, but we're just checking there. Obviously, it's got the two number two injector fault codes in there, and we're just going to clear all the codes, and then we'll go into the coding. Right, so that's all the codes cleared. Obviously, it's got one permanent fault code there that it can't read in that ECU, just the instrument cluster. Um, but uh, again, this top machine's proved itself. Uh, it's got the option on there for the coding. I just had a quick play about with it quick play about they just tried to figure out where it is but it didn't take me long to find basically along this menu along the top we've got the special functions if we go on there we've got diesel engine special function and once we're on that you can see we've got the injector match in there I know we need to do once we're on there it's got a list for obviously this hasn't got 12 injectors but it must just be across the board for obviously a range of different engines and um, but obviously we need to go into injector 2 so we can just simply select injector 2 okay and then it shows the coding that's in there at the minute, which we can just confirm, just a little double check. Also, we've got the old injector here. I'm just trying to focus on it, but you can see we've got the code there, B8GHJL. Uh, it does list a zero on the end there. We might need to do that, but basically that's confirmed that that is number two injector. So, so we'll just go in there to put some new data in it. Right, so you can see that stored that I did it with the six digits what's on the injector and it's automatically added the zero on there so that must just be something that it, it does automatically so but now that that's stored in there we can simply go out we're now ready just to strike it back up give it a run and make sure it's definitely fixed the fault but if we just start it up now one thing i'm going to do before we take it out for a run is just strike it up just have it running and just have a good look across the engine bay just make sure that everything's sealed obviously the return pipes it's got a little seal on there so you need to make sure that the return pipe's not uh, leaking so we'll just strike it up now make sure it's down sounds okay didn't strike up too bad there sometimes when you've had all the fuel pipes off and the diesels round back it can take a few cranks to fire up i didn't uh, obviously struck straight up nearly there so um, but we'll just leave it running for a bit now just have a quick look under the under, under the engine bay and check that out and we'll give it a road test and let you know it's definitely fixed the fault <laughs>
Right, so just got back from a five mile road test, run absolutely spot on, back on all four cylinders now, haven't missed a beat, um, but once I've got back, I've just plugged the top down machine in again, just done another full scan on it, just to see what's come up out of the fault codes that are cleared, and just as a double check really, not all engine faults can put the put the fault light on the actual dash, so just to run through it, you can see that the engine ECU is still green, nice and clear in there, no faults now. Some of these other faults have come up. Just thought I'd show you quickly with this machine, just how easy it is to read them when you've done a full scan. You could just simply click on the ECU there that it's in, it'll tell you which ECU is at the top, and then obviously the fault that's logged in there as well. So just really nice and sort of clear how it lays it all out, that's all. So. But yeah, hope you liked the video. Just thought I'd put it together in case anyone wanted to have a go at replacing their injector and was a bit unsure about how to do it. And it's just proved again that this top-down machine can do the coding on there as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.